Dylan Court in the last stage of my PhD at the Lady University in under the supervision of this team. And these are my collaborators, especially Thomas Madua and the another colleague by Fly Space Center. So as the title says, I'm working on hydro and radio transport simulation on ETA. And I apply them to the kind of the system they're working on, but the main part of this tool will focus on the radio transport method that can be applied to any system. So at the beginning of the conference was asked to create some connection with the big picture. And I will try to do that. And as in several PN, the central engine of Ithaca is a binary system with a really high mass loss rate. And here I have to stop. But nevertheless, in the first talk of the conference there were these centers that just attract my attention. And with a little bit of fine tuning, we can just apply this to Ithaca. And even if I agree with you that this going on looking rather different from what we heard in all the talks so far, nevertheless, the output of this event was this. And this looks similar to a lot of nice features that we saw on this screen in these days. To summarize more or less what I'm trying to say you and to ensure you that we, you will not see either car in any end uh, catalog is a goose, but it looks like a duck. And maybe this can be important to just try to understand something, even if the scale is completely different. So why do we want to create model and synthetic observation of uh, Ithaca or whatever kind of system? It's because we start having a lot of observation like this one. This is a famous light curve of Ithaca or sleep spectroscopy from a high-voltage telescope showing forbidden emission line of the more recent uh, isovelocity map of uh, intercarbons showing this structure on the wet shifted wind and for propagation is something that looks like to be stable over several variation passages and suddenly in the last one decided to be a completely different. So this is some data about Ithaca. What is important in this table is basically that we have two stars with, so the primary as a really dense slow wind and the secondary as a less dense but way faster wind on a really uh, central orbit. These are some of the areas where we can just apply to start on Ithaca. So this is a zoom in uh, look in the SPA simulation. And basically what we see here is the dense slow primary wind and the secondary wind is able to just create this cone shape structure in the wind. This snapshot is taken at the uh, epistle. And this is what happens. So we the simulation started at the epistle and nothing is really happening. We have this uh, cone, but it's difficult to say, but we are approaching the reaction passage. The reaction the speed, the orbital speed became comparable with the wind speed, and the secondary is able to basically carve a hole in the primary wind, and the really fast uh, moving secondary wind is basically compress the primary wind and create this <coughs> high density shell that expands the velocity slightly higher than the permanent velocity of the primary. Main topic, so synthesis. Synthesis is a, a what is the transport algorithm developed in Leiden and presented the first time by Kelvin and Vincent uh, Ike. Is I'm trying to explain your high course. So you have a medium, and the first thing that you do, you just sample this medium with the Poisson point process. And at the point that you create with this process, you use it as a nucleus of a Voronoi tessellation of the space and this tessellation works in this way to so basically create unstructured grid that has the property that each point inside the set is this grid is closer to this nuclear than every other nucleus in the entire simulation. And then you connect all this node with the Deloni uh, triangulation. So Voronoi translation, sorry. Uh, and what happens is that every time step, all these nucleus are accessed randomly in your simulation. And the radiation that arrives from the 
in the time step is used to modify the chemical state of the set and then whatever photon survive after a social and other chemical process are transported following these different recipes uh, with different uh, physical process that you want to just uh, simulate along this line. So this really local uh, rate transfer method that they have entered that is really scaling well with the number of sources because there's no over computational time necessary. If you, for example, have photons also from the combination of photons and these kind of things. So this is the general picture. Uh, the code is at the this code is an actually adapt this resolution to the wise of physical scale is part it can be used as to on green days and back of days, aerodynamic pool, and it's computationally cheap. So what we did with our uh, simulation, we took the snapshot from the SPA simulation and post-process it with simplex. And since the number of particles in the simulation were that high, we used every single SPA particle as a node. And we estimate the density instead of using a normal kernel function, a kernel triangulation field estimate. We know that this kind of estimation does lead to less smooth representation of the density field, but the advances that we have is that they are mass conserving and they represent way better a small scale structure and especially strong gradient is something that we have in a win win interaction. So, so if you no. yeah, if you apply all of this, this is what you have. So this is a grid that closely follows your density. So this is kind of the scale of our simulation. We have the scale, but the scale is comparable with the average space telescope observation. And this is a density. If you remember the previous plot with the movies, just following the everywhere, the one of the S fields of the X, Y, and Z, and Y, Z, click. So next step, we are the source. So we put this luminosity on the secondary star. This is consistent with the O5 giant star. And we have to use natural capacity at, least at the beginning because one of the problems that we don't want to have too fast and dynamically evolving system because we have to have the photo to travel so we have to just evolve it and this natural are all on evolution time of three months so the first thing that we try to see the difference is just how this uh, situation changes if we have here so it's possible to just find trace both the initiation of virus and here and what we see is that, for example, if you only have hydrogen, basically the radiation is able to penetrate on the other side of the wing wing contact is continuity. And adding even this F is completely removed and as expected, really high dense region, such, such as like this, so the wing contact is continuity, are able to retain a higher neutral fraction. And this is really important because this is one of the regions that we are really interested in looking at. So the second step that we do is just to have a better chance of all the ionization in our system is to include collision ionization. And as you can see now here you have this sort of reverse situation in which where you have really low dense material, this material is incredibly hot. And with the top panel is basically the simulation one with only collision, only photon, and photon plus collision. And you can see that the, the effect of the collision is really important in this low dense finger where the photon is basically not able to arrive due to this kind of really high density wall and they clearly show up in the composing image and this can, can be really important when we try to create some uh, synthetic observations but this just will lead to some trace of that position so one of the first things that we try to explore since we had different mass of right? the uh, SPA simulation is the effect of this one on the organization of our volume and as you can see just going for something that is 8.5 2.4 so factor of course create drastically different situation in the organization of uh, your volume since the first thing that happens is that the this conical shape is not that conical it's almost flat in this, uh, in this simulation and so the photon has a way better Root to just ionize all this air, and also the density in the wing wing contact discontinuity is not that high, and so the photon is basically able to pierce through and ionize this all the area around this uh, primary wing, this inner primary wing. 
So all the famous plots were on hydrogen, uh, uh, this is helium, and uh, but influencing, directly influencing the hydrogen uh, shape of the ionizing column is also important because as you can see, for example, the helium 2, the helium 2 is, looks like to be a really well tracer of this uh, post uh, periodic encounter really high dense uh, material that was created in this encounter between the two stars. So it can be used to just find out something like that. So just to summarize and just to explain some future work, so in the short term, uh, we collaborate with some multi-site outer space, outer space test or observation board that going through the 2015. In 2015, that will be the next periodic passage. And then we produce made something like this where you have the blue shifted, the low velocity white shifted composite image of uh, ionized, uh, yeah, forbidden ionized lines. And we can put some synthetic observation and try to model the line in this way. So when we create this uh, ionization map, uh, we have this tool that basically takes the depth we just rotating in the viewing angle that we think is that and it's just do some sort of uh, line of sight we see the integration and so we can create something that you know, oh, it's, we will look really like similar to this and this can help us for training data like mass loss because for example this the the shape of this uh, shell expanding in the in the primary unit are just directly connected with the mass loss and also the orientation of the space and the same for the uh, for the, the position of this forbidden line, if, if you change the orientation and if you change the mass loss, you will obtain completely different picture. On the long term, we, we are starting to do some preliminary study of stop cost processing and do full radiative hydrodynamic simulation. This will allow us mainly to do two things. The first one is to treat all eating and cooling in a more consistent way, and the second one is that. One of the problems that we are limited to a task is that the reaction task of the dynamical evolution of the system is too fast, and so we can't evolve long enough. And just doing radiated, radiated, radiated and radio at the same time, we just completely remove this problem. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Is there any question? Are you sure that it's spherical on the line wind? Sorry? Is the wind that on the line is spherical? Uh, in the simulation or in general? Um, in the simulations. In the simulation, the wind is basically uh, is launched as a beta law with beta equal to 1. So it is a conservation and then it just equates the density profile and go down half as one or half square. So it just, it's, it's launched in a spherical way, yes. No further questions, and we'll move on to the, the next speaker. Uh, we'll talk about the black sheet of astronomy, the article was last.